Hi, Tim Skell here, ADD Application Engineering. Today we're going to look at setting up a PID control loop on the ACH580. For our application example today, we'll do a, a cooling tower, but same concept would apply whether this is a pump or fan. So first I'm going to do is go into Menu, go into Primary Settings, and I'm going to scroll down to PID Control and select there. Now I have my first decision. Do I want to use the PID assistant where I let the drive ask me questions and I answer them? Or do I just want to go down the list of questions and answer that information through this list below? I usually do that second option. I find it easier to just go through and select what I need to adjust. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, yes, I want to use PID control. So I select here. It is always active. So my first main decision here is where's my start stop and if applicable, my direction command, say if I have uh, the ice mode for a cooling tower in northern climate. So I come into here and I'm gonna say my start stop is on digital input one. I'm gonna say that I don't need to reverse, but if I wanted to do say reversing on digital input two, I could have selected the second option right there. So digital input one is my start stop. Now I've got my units. So water temperature, cooling tower, controlling to the water temp, so that's why I'm going to use degrees Fahrenheit. If I had a different application, uh, pump or fan, if I was trying to do PSI or if I was trying to do CFM for flow on a, on a fan, I could change the units here. The units are really helpful when we do the scaling, and I'll show you the scaling in a moment. There's PID status here. This is mainly for troubleshooting. Just view, you can see which bits are high and low. Now we get into our feedback. So let's take a look at that and let's select. And first thing I have to decide on is where's my feedback signal coming to, from and getting landed to on the drive. So I've got my water temperature and I'm landing that sensor back on analog input two. And I have to decide, do I want an analog input scaled or analog input two as a percent value? I am choosing scaled because I like to talk about things in degrees Fahrenheit. I don't like talking about things in 77% set point. But if you're a 77% set point type of person, you like things between 0 and 100% for your set points and everything's in percentages and, and your feedback's in percentages, things like that, that's where you'd use this analog input 2% value. But I'm going to leave it as scaled because that's my personal preference. I like seeing the actual units. So next thing I'm going to do is my, my scaling now. So analog input 2 on the drive is where my sensors landed. Now I do my range of that sensor, so I can do a, if it's a 4 to 20 milliamp sensor, is it a 2 to 10 volt sensor, 0 to 10? So let's assume it's a 4 to 20 milliamp sensor. And now you simply say, hey, when the sensor's 4 milliamps, that's the equivalent of, say, 0 degrees Fahrenheit in this example. Or if it's 20 milliamps, it's 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, just find out what your sensor is, and you're just aligning that scaling to match your, your sensor. I'm going to back out and come to set point. So I got my feedback taken care of. Let's take a look at the set point. Factory defaults has it set for 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have it set for a constant set point by default because one of the common applications the drive gets used for is retrofit situations where they had a, a constant speed or a two speed cooling tower set up and they're applying a VFD to it. They don't always have an advanced automation system integrated into that controller, into that system. So what we end up doing is leveraging the PID and the drive to manage the, the water temperature set point. So by default, constant set point, 75 degrees, I can go ahead and change that to some other constant uh, temperature if I wanted to. Or if I had a little bit more advanced system and I had a building and management system that was gonna tell me what the temperature should be, I could come in here and I could say AI1 scaled as my analog input one is getting say a zero to 10 volt or four to 20 milliamp from the automation system. And again, I could just set up the scaling like I had done with the feedback. But for simplicity, let's leave this one at constant set point. Back out of there. Now I've got my tuning. So one thing I like is on this screen here, this value right here is live. So it's telling me how far my actual value is away from set point. So I am four, a little over four degrees higher than my set point right now. So I've got my gain or my P, I got my integration, my I, and if you're really one of those people who want to really tune her in, you've got a D to play with, but in most cases, the, the gain and the integration are the only ones that you're adjusting. Once you adjust that to stabilize the system, 
you come down and look at this next part and there's this increase output so this is one of those things that depending who you talk to direct indirect there's different terms for what they're really meaning here we did our best to put this into plain english so do you want the drive to increase its output speed when the feedback is less than the set point or do you want it to increase the output speed when the feedback is greater than the set point so in the case of a cooling tower, when your feedback, it's saying, hey, the, the water temperature is 79 degrees right now, but my set point's only 75. What do I want the application to do? Well, I want that fan to speed up. I need more evaporation. I need more cooling. So in this case, we have the feedback greater than set point is when the drive should speed up the motor. Now, if I had a pump or a fan, it would actually be opposite, where I'd want the, the drive to speed up when the feedback was less than set point. So if I was controlling duct static pressure, for example, and all my VAV boxes are opening up, my duct static pressure was dropping. Now my feedback is below my set point. I'd actually want my fans to speed up in that case. So depending on the application, it's either direct or indirect control. And we kind of use the plain English approach right here. I'll put it just kind of status of what it's running at at this very moment. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the sleep function. So kind of a cool thing here is we can enable the sleep function. So imagine your cooling tower and it's got no problem maintaining the set point and it's really just sitting there running at a minimum speed and it doesn't really need to run. This is where the sleep function can kind of kick in and allow the equipment to shut off and then wake back up when necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the sleep function. First thing I do is I say, what speed should I enable the sleep function at? So cooling tower, let's say if it's operating below 25 hertz, or some delay time so let's say it's below 25 Hertz for more than 60 seconds now it's going to enter sleep mode and then I can take a look and there's my wake up deviation and wake up time so then I basically say when it's gets above my set point so my set point was 75 degrees if it gets above that that set point for too long which is my right here so I can say if I get up to three degrees too warm, so now that would be 78 degrees for a certain delay time here. Then it's gonna go ahead and wake back up. And then one thing I'll also mention is, not as much for cooling towers, you could use it, but I see it more for pumping applications. There is a boost time and a boost step. So what that is, is before it goes to sleep, say you got a pumping application, it'll actually speed up a little bit just to pressurize the system before it goes to sleep. So that way it can actually stay asleep a little bit longer. So that's what the, the boost time is here. If you have questions on these, there's always this question mark here. So say wake up deviation, what does that mean? Hit the question mark. When deviation exceeds this value, the drive starts the motor again after an adjustable delay. So there you have it, setting up a PID control in the ACH580. One other neat thing I'll show you real quick is if I come all the way back to the home view here and hit this left arrow, you can see that it's already set up for PID. So I got my cooling tower one set point, 75 degrees. My feedback right now is 79 degrees and I'm not running. It's a little bit quieter when I do this when the equipment's not actually running. So there you have it, how to set up a cooling tower PID on the ACH 580. Thank you.